Hi, my name is Ben Belgrad. I'm a marine biologist here at the Dolphin Island Sea Lab. And one of the big things that our research is looking into are oysters. So here are a few that I've just collected. And we like to work with oysters because they provide a large amount of ecosystem services where they provide benefits to humans, like they filter our water, uh, they provide food, we eat them, they also provide shelter for a lot of other species. Now unfortunately in Alabama, these are now almost functionally extinct, which means that they are so rare that they can no longer actually provide those valuable ecosystem services. So what we're trying to do in this lab is actually see if we can restore the oyster reefs and improve how well we can actually uh, grow out our oysters. So these are almost adults, but when oysters are really young and juvenile, they're only about this big as a juvenile, they can be eaten by almost anything. And so we're trying to actually stimulate them to grow a harder, tougher shell. And we found previously that if we expose them to predator cues, uh, like uh, the waste product of a predator, it'll cause them to grow that stronger shell and then it's much harder for predators to crush them and break them open. So we'll hopefully get higher survival when we expose them to the cues. Now, that brings us to the first part of this project is we actually need to get our predator cues to stimulate our oysters. And this is a much part of a much larger project where we're also trying to find the specific molecules, the specific compounds that are stimulating these oysters to grow thicker stronger shells. And so right here what I have for you are a bunch of blue crabs that I've put on ice. And we're going to try to extract the urine from the blue crabs today. Now the reason why I put them in, on ice is because blue crabs are one of the most aggressive crabs you can find out there in the wild. They are what gives the definition a crabby crab. So. They're very aggressive, and it turns out that crabs are ectotherms, meaning that their metabolism and their internal body temperature depends on their outside environment. And so if I put them on ice, it slows their metabolism down, it causes them to be much more docile, they become very sleepy and lethargic. It's a very cheap form of anesthetic. So they aren't nearly as active, and I can then pick them up without having to worry about being pinched. And so to extract the urine, I actually have to find where the, it expels itself. And so your crabs actually expel their urine from two holes rather than the one that humans have. So right here and right here are little flaps that cover those holes. They're called nephropores, which is just a broad term for uh, animal without a backbone that expels its urine. And so what I'm going to do is I have this setup right here where I can actually extract the urine. So I have a little needle and this uh, needle is attached to a tube where I have a collecting vial for my urine. And then I have a pump right here so that I get a vacuum so that I'll just suck out the urine from the crab. And then right here I have another vial and this is a filter vial so I don't have any fluid go up into my pump and break it. So we have two questions. Tanya asks, um, how do oysters grow? How do oysters grow? Uh, similar to you and me where they act, take in food, take in energy and use that energy uh, to build material. But here uh, is when an oyster is initially born, it's very small, very tiny. And so it'll start off here and slowly add more shell to the very edges. So these ridges right here uh, mark certain stages of its life. So the oyster is growing larger. And so eventually when it's bigger, it'll look kind of like how my hand is surrounding it. It grows along the very edges. And actually, Oysters are probably the sharpest thing that you'll find in the ocean. It's almost like razor blades at the very edges. That shell is so fine and strong that if you're not careful, it'll actually cut you. Um, Kyla, who's 11, says that she's caught a blue, huge blue crab on a fishing pole while fishing, and it was heavy. 
Yeah, they come in all sorts of sizes. So these crabs that I have are still actually a little bit immature. This is a female, I can tell by its uh, tail shape right here. And because it's triangular shape, I can tell that it's immature. If it was mature, it'd actually be rounder. And they start off as really tiny, almost planktonic, microscopic organisms, and then they can get to be about like this big. So. Craig asks, um, how do crabs poop? How do crabs poop? So underneath its tail is uh, another hole where it'll expel its waste right around here, but you can't see that right now. I can try to... Oh, don't hurt the little crab. No, it's designed. Where this can actually lift up. Oh, wow. Um, Kyla asks, she's 11, what do they eat? What do crabs eat? What do oysters eat? So crabs are basically the tritivores, meaning that they eat stuff that's dead on the sea floor. If they can, they'll also try to capture live fish and shrimp. Anything that is uh, smaller than it and it can grab a hold of that's alive and not a plant, it'll eat. Uh, even other crabs, in some circumstances. And then oysters are filter feeders. Yes, oysters are filter feeders. And so they will uh, suck in water through uh, their gills and then uh, filter out all the dirt and mud and just eat little tiny uh, plankton that are in the water. Um, Noah, who's eight, wants to know, what is the biggest oyster you found? Biggest oyster I found is probably about this big. So they can get large. Uh, usually we don't get them that large because people harvest them sooner than that. So usually you'll find them out about this big as adults or even in the restaurant they can be a little smaller. Um, Alice, who eight, he's eight years old, wants to know what type of water do the oysters and crabs like? Uh, so, oysters prefer water that's a little bit more saline, uh, whereas blue crabs can tolerate a wide uh, range of uh, salinities. So can oysters, but uh, blue crabs will actually prefer the water to be a little bit fresher. Oysters prefer it to be a little bit saltier. And the warmer it is, the better, because as I mentioned, they're ectotherms, so that having warmer water speeds up all their body processes. They'll grow faster, they'll be able to eat more. Kate, who's 11, what animals eat oysters besides humans, and how do they open the shell to eat them? And this kind of goes into why we want stronger oyster shells. Yes, exactly. So when the oysters themselves are very little, much smaller than this, so almost like uh, the size of my a uh, little point here. Just about anything can eat them, particularly little tiny crabs. As they get larger, it, the size of the crab needs to be larger for them to eat them. Uh, stone crabs actually have a special, specialized claw that can crush even oysters this size and larger. Uh, you'll also have fish uh, like a uh, black drum, which can have strong jaws and crush the oysters. Uh, Kyla, who's 11, asks, are any of the crabs that you have, do they have eggs? Do you have uh, no, and it's very easy to tell if a crab has an eggs on it because it has this yellow mass underneath it. So I generally try not to use crabs with eggs because we want them to raise those eggs and have them grow. Um, where do you find lots of oysters? Abe, who's 10 years old, asks. Uh, not in Alabama, unfortunately, unless you're at an actual oyster farm. Uh, Florida has some decent oysters. Uh, you'll generally find them right near the shore. Uh, they build up a reef where they'll just grow on top of each other. And so you can see them on uh, hard ground. So something that's like a rock or cement that's in the water at, at the intertidal zone where it floods sometimes and is exposed there as other times, that's where you can find them naturally. Uh, Poppy, who's five, wants to know how oysters make pearls. Oysters uh, make pearls, uh, so sometimes uh, when they're filtering all this water, uh, they aren't able to get out all that uh, sand and debris, and so they get a little hard piece. And so they'll start to actually cover that hard piece with mucus uh, to smooth out it, so it's not rubbing up against its soft body tissue and irritating it. And over time, that uh, 
little mucus covered piece gets more and more mucus that hardens through time and it actually forms a nice uh, shiny object, a pearl. So have you ever found a pearl in one of your oysters? I have not. I've been very disappointed. And usually uh, when you're doing artificial pearl growing, people will intentionally place little pieces of plastic in the oyster to cause it to uh, develop pearls. It's very rare in the wild that it will have a piece that doesn't come out of itself. Um, Aubrey asks, how do oysters breathe? How do oysters breathe? Uh, so they have, when they're filtering water, they have a uh, tissue with little gills, uh, uh, fine thin uh, layers of uh, flesh that are very thin. And so when the water passes through, oxygen naturally diffuses into that tissue. And so kind of like crabs have gills, oysters too have gills. Um, Kyla wants to know, how do oysters see? So, oysters can't see. They don't really have any simple eye spots like some other bivalves do. Uh, they can detect uh, changes in uh, pressure or touch uh, and cha detect changes in water velocity. So they can tell when something is nearby it uh, by that, and but they can't actually see anything. All right, one more before we get into showing them how you um, collect from the, uh, from the crabs. Uh, we have Caitlin and Aubrey who both asked, how do the oysters reproduce? So they go through a process called broadcast spawning, where when they have the certain environmental conditions that are right, usually a sharp change in salinity, uh, all the oysters within a region will expel uh, their sperm and eggs, and so all the, in very high quantities, and so that's all floating through the water column. And when the sperm and egg uh, contact each other, they fertilize the, and or float into the water. So that's actually how oysters travel. It's by that broadcast spawn and where that uh, fertilized egg is just floating in the water and moves to another location. Broadcast spawn. And they. It's the only time, though, that oysters ever move anywhere, isn't it? Because yeah. once they find their spot, they're there. They cement themselves down into that one location, which is also why it's very important that they get a thick shell, because they can't move away and avoid a predator. The only way is to harden themselves enough that something that comes along can't break them open. So let's go ahead and get into, we have a couple other questions while you set this up. Um, we're going to show them, though, how you, so we want to stimulate oyster shell growth. Yeah. And one of those things is you have to collect cues, the cues, and the cues are basically what oysters, the how oysters know that people are, that yeah. something's there. So not only can oysters uh, know if a predator is there by touch, but they can also smell. And so crab urine is very smelly to an oyster. And so what we do is we just turn on this pump, and then I have my needle tip and I just slowly insert it into the crab's nephropore. He's waking up a little bit. So once I've inserted it in here, I should hopefully see fluid coming out. And that's not always the case. Sometimes crabs don't have any urine to give me. You can see just a few little droplets. Yeah. There we go, a little bit of water. And we might, it's good to point out, this does not hurt the crab. Yeah. And you are able to put the crab back in the water. Yeah, I am able to put the crab back into the water. And I try very hard to be gentle and not damage the crab. Oh, he's not happy now. Nope. It's not the most comfortable thing for the crab. So Peyton asks, are, crab, are oysters hermaphroditic? So are there boy crab oysters and girl oysters? Actually, yeah. Uh, each oyster has its own uh, sex or gender. So there are female oysters and there are male oysters. And the only way that you can really tell is to either have them spawn and then look at if they release sperm or eggs or to dissect them. You can't tell by looking on the outside if a oyster is male or female. And that's something to get in with the, 
Whiskers Fishery Lab. Yes. Uh, Ava, who's 12, she wants to know why are blue crabs blue? Uh, that's just their uh, normal pigmentation. Uh, they evolved that way because that color was helped them survive the best in their environment. But I don't have a specific answer to that. <laughs> so one of the things that I want to do is also keep uh, my urine from one crab separate from the urine from all the other crabs. I didn't get too much from there, but there are still trace amounts. So I actually have to switch this out and put in a whole uh, new setup. Kyla asks, why don't you clamp their claws? Uh, mostly because putting them on ice is sufficient and because that's a tremendous amount of time. And usually I have about 40 of these that I have to do. And I just have to be as most time efficient as possible. And this is a project that y'all started last year. Yes. Um, and you're continuing on because you've received more funding to be able to do this. Yes. Um, so it's a, it's a really cool project. So. Yeah. And it takes a while to uh, extract all this urine. Uh, I need about 400 uh, milliliters before the summer starts. And I'm, as you saw, I'm lucky if I get any from one <laughs> crab. Sometimes I can get up to five milliliters, though, which would be great if that happened. So here I can try a new crab. And so I have them in little containers so that I can keep track of each individual. below the eye. There we go. There it is. And we can share a video um, from part of what they did last year Well, this one is actually giving out a fair amount, which I'm thrilled about. So I guess this is a good point to mention that, you know, sometimes marine science isn't always out in the field. There are things that we do in the lab. Um, but the big part of the importance of this is we want to help um, <laughs> oyster farmers. Yeah, so we can use this for oyster restoration and oyster farmers in general. So make a really strong oyster. So this one right here is actually male. Remember how the tail was triangular shaped? This one is uh, much thinner. So easy comparison is the Capitol building has a round dorm. The Washington Monument has a nice long peak. <laughs> well, Ben, we appreciate you joining us this morning and sharing this information. Um, and we'll drop in the comments some other things. But uh, anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate it.